Hello friends. Today we are going to start with a new chapter that is strong slot and filler structures. In my previous videos, uh, we had already seen big slot and filler structures. We had seen two big slot and filler structures there. One was semantic net and the second one is spring. As already mentioned, they are called as weak slot and filler structure because their representation is weak. They are knowledge poor. So in this chapter, we shall see how uh, uh, this particular strong slot and filler structures have upper hand over the previous slot and filler structures. Now, before we actually see what are strong slot and filler structures, let us see the disadvantages of weak slot and filler structures. The first and foremost disadvantage is these uh, slot and filler structures, they are knowledge poor. That means they cannot represent the information in crisp, clear way. Uh, for a uh, for a instance, if you consider a semantic net, can you represent present tense, past tense, future tenses, or time using such structure? No. Even in frames, frames is just you know a structural representation of the same semantic net which is graphical. There also such information like uh, present tense, past tense, future tenses, they cannot be represented. All this cannot be represented. As a result, uh, it is called as knowledge poor. The main problem actually associated with semantic net and frames is that they lack formality. Okay, There is no formal way of doing it. For example, given a sentence, you all end up drawing so many different types of semantic nets and yet we say they are correct. Okay. Similarly, different frames uh, systems can be designed for the same particular sentence. So there is no one particular crisp, clear way of representation. Going into the depth, the setback of semantic net is also that, okay, semantic net, it is basically a graph representation. And since it is graph representation, uh, which may not be very efficient use of memory, loosely represented knowledge it's the second disadvantage third there is no specific guideline on how to use the representation right okay and the fourth most important uh, uh, disadvantage is we have already seen what are tangled hierarchies and what are the problems that we are facing in this tangled hierarchy all these are basically setbacks of semantic net also when you consider your uh, frames the setback of frames the mo most important problem is called as frame problem this problem is what so when things change we need not we, we need to modify all the frames okay that are relevant and this can be time con consuming for example we have seen frame structure is basically it is it is based on hierarchy right one frame inherits content of other frame that frame inherits some other frame and so on so now let us assume that some data within one particular frame changes. Don't you think all the other frames that are, that are relevant or that are dependent on this particular frame, the changes will have to be done in those frames also? Yes. And this is time consuming. For an instance, consider having a frame that represents a hotel room and the table has a potted plant on it. When we move the ta uh, table away from the window, do we also modify it? that the plant is no longer near the window and so may die because of lack of sunlight. This is a frame problem. Shank and Richard, they offered the following network-like representations uh, that could replace the weak slot and filler structures. Uh, the first representation they came up with was called as conceptual dependency and the second one was script. The conceptual dependency is basically used with natural language processing. And it has an upper end over, you know, the weak slot and fillers because it is now knowledge rich as later on you are, you are going to learn how why it is called as knowledge rich. And we shall also see devoid of the natural language in which the sentence is said, it will have only one unique CD representation with a crisp clear meaning. It means sentence may be said in many particular ways or maybe in many different languages yet the CD representation for all those sentences will be one unique representation. 
Conceptual dependency was developed to represent the meaning of natural language sentences and it basically helps in drawing interfaces and it is independent of the language. It is the most important advantage. Okay. Now CD representation, what it does is a sentence is not built basically using the words because we see in English words have different synonyms or maybe the different words can convey the same meaning and so on. So to avoid that ambiguity in CD representation, we are not going to use uh, words to build the sentences. Rather, we are going to use something called as conceptual primitives. We shall see what are these. Okay. So CD provides structures and set of primitives which can represent and can build uh, the sentence. Okay. Now, when you talk about the components of conceptual dependency, the first component of conceptual dependency is the acts. So what these people have done, you know, basically in, in humans, there are certain primitive actions that we do. In English, to do a particular action, it can be conveyed in so many different ways, yet the action will remain the same. So what these people have done, they have used a keyword for a particular action. Okay, let's start. A trans. What is A trans? It is transfer of an abstract relationship. For example, when you give somebody something or when you pay money, that's also A trans. Okay, or when you lend your pen to a particular person, that is also transfer of abstract relationship, giving. Okay, so all these different sentences would be represented with only one particular action that is called as a trans. A trans means abstract relationship transfer. Transfer trans means transfer. P trans transfer of a physical location of an object. When a physical location of an object changes, that is called as uh, P trans. P for physical location, trans for transfer. Okay, example go. When you go from location A to B or sometimes in place of go, you can also say walk. Okay. Or you may also say drive. Okay. So all this basically is nothing but transfer of a physical location of an object. So for all such different sentences, we'll be using only one action that is called as P terms. Propel. Application of a physical force to an object. Example pushing. So what is propel? When you apply a physical force to an object, okay, that's uh, called as propel. Example, pushing, pushing something. Or many a times you say, uh, Mr. X shot Mr. Y. Now, when you say shot, shooting means what? That uh, uh, the force is applied onto the trigger of the gun and that releases the bullet. Okay, so that also comes under the same definition. So, shooting somebody is propel. And the object for propulsion, uh, propel, propelling is a uh, bullet. Okay, so propel means application of physical force to an object. Next action is move. Movement of body part by its owner. For example, kick. In order to kick, you move your body part, that is your legs. Right? So that is basically move. Similarly, if you want to say, he punched me. There also you are moving your hand. Right? So that also comes under move. So many such similar actions will be given a common act that is called as move. Grasp. Grasping of an object by an actor. I'm sorry, it's not action. It is actor. Okay. Grasping of an object by an actor. So he caught hold of my hand. Grasp. He threw a stone. In order to throw the stone, he will grasp the stone in the hand and then release it. All this Different sentences can be represented with one action that is called as grasp. Ingest. Ingestion of an object by an animal. For example, eat. Right? Very easy. Expel. Expulsion of something from the body of an animal. That means, uh, for example, cry. When you cry, the tears are expelled from the your body. So, expel action. M trans. M trans means memory transfer, transfer of mental information. Okay. Example telling. So when you tell something, you know something already and you are just telling it. You are transferring the mental information. For all such uh, actions, M trans can be used. M build, building new information out of old. Example decide. So what is the meaning of deciding? You already have some information in your mind. And based on that information, you are trying to deduce new information. And that is deciding, right? M build, memory build. 
okay speak producing of sound now speak and expel is not same expel means expulsion of something from the body of an animal cry is okay but uh, speak also is similar but speak is specially used when you are going to produce sound from your mouth example say okay and last uh, primitive is called as attend focusing of a sense organ towards a stimulus example listen right so, or for example you can even say see when you see something you are focusing a sensory organ that is your eyes towards a stimulus towards a change so these are uh, basic uh, primitive acts that are there right conceptual categories the second component of uh, uh, conceptual dependency are some conceptual categories and basically there are four conceptual categories here one act now we have already seen uh, conceptual dependency primitives okay in the previous slides okay so primitive actions act for primitive actions the second category is pp pp is nothing but they are the objects involved in the sentence or they are the actors that produces different acts pp stand for picture producers okay so what are pp's pp's are the different objects or actors who are going to perform certain thing in the given sentence who are going to act in the sentence they are pp's okay so first category is act second is pp then aa aa means action aider these are the modifiers of action okay so supporting properties or attributes of action they are action aider okay and pa modifiers of pp's okay picture aiders okay they are supporting properties or attributes of the producers they are called as pa right we shall see this in detail when we start solving the problems okay third component of uh, conceptual dependency is conceptual relationship so there is there are some relationships which are listed here the first one is called as o o is nothing but object case relation okay o for object case relation o indicates that a particular uh, entity is an object involved in that particular action then r r uh, uh, capital r or small r can be used for recipient case action it is used when you are specifying who is the sender who is the receiver recipient action okay you can either use capital r or small r that's called as recipient case action third conceptual relationship is d D stand for destination relation. So it is basically used when uh, you are going to specify uh, something, some interaction between the source and the destination. So that is called as destination relation. And I is the instrument relation. Okay. So sometimes sentence is something like dentist removed the tooth using a particular tool. So that tool is an instrument. So I is that relation which can show what is the tool used for that particular action. Okay. And the fourth very important concept is uh, for component of conceptual dependency are conceptual tenses. So small p it uh, indicates past tense, small f future tense, t for transition, t subscript s for start transition, t subscript f for finish transition, k for continuing question mark interrogative sentences slash negative when you don't write anything nil it means it's a present tense delta for timeless and c for conditional tenses so these are basically different tenses out of these tenses we usually use past tense future tense and present tense okay so uh, that's all for this particular uh, session in the next session we are going to see how uh, how can we form uh, sentences okay so there are basically some uh, rules okay there are basically some 12 13 rules in conceptual dependency so we are going to see all those rules and how to form sentences uh, cd representations in the next uh, videos thank you for watching